J of Armin 7, born c. 11 2025, died circa 1220, one of the most forceful and productive kings of the Khmer, Cambodian, Empire of Angkor, reigning 1181 c. 1220. He expanded the empire to its greatest territorial extent and engaged in a building program that yielded numerous temples, including Angkor Thom, highways, rest houses, and hospitals. Early Life Jayavarman was born into the royal family of Angkor. He married a very religious and strong-minded princess named Jayur Jadevi, who exerted an important influence on him both before he gained the throne and during the early years of his reign. Following her death he married her older sister, a very pious and learned woman whom he had previously installed as the head professor in an important Buddhist monastery. Though practically nothing is known of Jayavarman's childhood and youth, it is clear that during his late thirties and early forties he settled in the neighboring kingdom of Kampa, in what is now the central region of Vietnam. At the time of the death of his father, King Darinindravarman II, ruled 1150-60, Jayavarman was engaged in a military campaign in Kampa, and, after the accession of his brother, or possibly his cousin, Yesovarman II, ruled 1160-66, he chose to remain there, returning to Cambodia only when he received word that a palace rebellion was in progress. Although Jayavarman arrived at Angkor too late to prevent the murder of Yesovarman and the accession of the rebel tribe Uvanadirman, ruled 1166-77, he decided to remain in his homeland and to await an opportunity to assert his own claim to the throne. Some twelve years later, when Jayavarman was in his late fifties, that opportunity came as a result of a Cham invasion, which brought about the demise of tribe Uvanadirman the sacking of Angkor, and its subjection to foreign rule. In this situation Jayavarman organized a struggle for independence and in less than five years' time succeeded in driving out the invaders and establishing his hegemony over all his Cambodian rivals. Finally in 1181, at the age of 61, he was crowned king of a reconstituted Khmer Empire and began a brilliant reign of more than 30 years during which he brought the empire to its zenith, both in terms of territorial expansion and of royal architecture and construction. Jayavarman's Building Program During his reign Jayavarman continued his military activities, bringing Kampa, southern Laos, and portions of the Malay Peninsula and Burma under his control. But increasingly he devoted his energies and organizational capacities to the kind of religious and religio-political construction projects that had been carried on by his royal predecessors. He built a large number of awesome new temples, including the Bayan, a distinctively Mahayana Buddhist central pyramid temple designed to serve as the primary locus of the royal cult and also as his own personal mausoleum personal funerary temples of the Mahayana type, which were dedicated to his mother and father, and a series of provincial temples, which housed reduced replicas of the royal Buddha, i.e., Jayavarman represented with the attributes of the Buddha, the original of which had been set up in the Bayan. He rebuilt the city of Angkor, now known as Angkor Tom, and rebuilt and extended the system of highways which radiated outward from the Bayan and the royal palace and reached far into the provinces. In addition, he constructed more than 100 rest houses along these roads and built more than 100 hospitals, which he dispersed throughout his kingdom and placed under the protection of Bayajayaguru Varyaprab, the great Buddha of healing. Jayavarman seems to have been obsessed with the need for rapid and extensive construction. For example, the less than careful workmanship evident in the temples attributed to Jayavarman's reign vividly points to the great haste with which they were built. Some scholars have suggested that the almost frantic sense of urgency associated with Jayavarman's works derived from the fact that, having begun his reign at a relatively advanced age, he felt that his time was short and had to be utilized to the fullest. 
Others have suggested that Jayavarman's concern to carry through such a vast program of largely Buddhist-oriented construction was greatly encouraged by Jayur Jadevi and her sister, both of whom dedicated a tremendous amount of energy toward gaining support for Buddhism and specifically for building Buddhist temples. And finally, if scholars are correct in their surmise that Jayavarman suffered from the dread disease of leprosy, his concern to mitigate his sin and suffering through the accumulation of great merit may have given a still further impetus to his piety and zealousness. Whatever his true motivations, Jayavarman succeeded during his lifetime in creating a legacy that few monarchs in history, Khmer or otherwise, have been able to equal. He was more than 90 years old when he died. Modern Reputation Despite the importance of Jayavarman VII in the history of the Angkor Kingdom, no memory of him was preserved in the later Cambodian chronicles. In modern times, however, as archaeological studies generated popular interest in his reign, Jayavarman VII became a kind of paradigmatic national hero, who was credited not only with establishing the full greatness of the Cambodian nation but also with bringing into being a welfare state that was motivated by Buddhism and dedicated to serving both the spiritual and the physical needs of the Cambodian people. Scholars, however, have sought to maintain a more balanced view of Jayavarman, recognizing the obvious immensity of his accomplishments but also taking account of the fact that the overweening demands that he placed on the material and human resources of his kingdom may have been a major factor in its subsequent loss of creativity and its eventual demise.